For 70 years, every computer on Earth has been built on the same foundations. Binary, just zeros and ones. But what if that was a historical accident? What if computers didn't just stop at two states? What if they had a third state? That's the main idea behind ternary computing. Under the rise of AI and the limits of binary, ternary computing might just be making a comeback. Binary is simple. Two states. On for one and off for zero. Ternary, sometimes called trinary, adds three states. Think of it as negative one, zero, and positive one. This small change has big consequences. Each digit, called a trit, can represent more information than a bit. Math operations can be done with fewer steps. Even negative numbers become easier to handle. No extra sign bits required. To make it simple, two binary digits can represent four values, while two ternary digits can represent nine values. This means more efficiency, more compact circuits, and less energy used. This isn't just a theory. In 1958, Soviet engineer Nikola Brusunsov built the world's first ternary computer, the Saturn. It ran on three-state logic using fewer components than binary machines and was about 10 times cheaper to build. About 50 units of the Saturn were made and they worked, but it failed to spread. Not because it was bad, but because the world had already standardized on binary. Memory, transistors, software, everything was built for two state. Forward to today, AI is burning through electricity at massive scales. Data centers are straining, power grids, and once again, we're hitting a wall. Binary logic is simple, but maybe not efficient enough for what's coming next. That's why companies and researchers are revisiting ternary computing. Huawei recently patented a ternary chip at 7 nanometers. The trick? Transistors with two threshold levels instead of just one. This allows them to clearly separate three states instead of two. Their designs show up to 40% fewer devices, 60% less power, and 20% faster performance compared to binary chips. Here's the catch. Distinguishing three states of current makes the chips more sensitive to noise and manufacturing flaws. Our entire software and hardware systems are built for binary, zeros, and ones. Memory, compilers, programming languages, all of it assumes two states only. That was a challenge that Nikolai Brusensov faced in 1958 and it's still a challenge that the world faces today. Still, new materials like carbon nanotubes and graphene might change the game. They naturally allow three-state searching levels and are incredibly fast and energy efficient. Imagine AI chips that consume one-third less power while doing the same work. That could be huge for data centers, batteries, and even future personal devices. Will ternary computing replace binary? Probably not, but it can work alongside it. Used in areas where efficiency matters more than compatibility, history shows us that big leaps in technology don't come from doing more of the same thing. They come from daring to try something different, something new. And ternary computing is exactly that a new way to think about the foundations of computing. So now we know what ternary computing is, how it started, and why it's relevant again. Do you think ternary computing will finally get at this moment, or do you think binary is just too entrenched in our daily lives? Let me know in the comments below, and if you're curious about the future of computing and artificial intelligence, hit subscribe. There's a lot more that we have to explore together, and see you in the next video. Bye.